The year is 184 AD. The Han Dynasty is in decline, the land is ravished with disease, natural disasters and famine, and the people believe that the heavens weren't happy with the emperor because of these things. It also didn't help that some of the court eunuchs were abusing their powers in the imperial court to benefit themselves. This ultimately led to a Taoist faction known as the Followers of the Way of Supreme Peace to rise up in rebellion. These rebels were known by the Yellow Turbans they wore and the Yellow Turban Rebellion began. This rebellion is also the beginning of a chain of events that would change and romanticise Chinese history and is also the setting for Wo Long, Fallen Dynasty, which I'll shorten to Wo Long for simplicity's sake, an action role-playing game with dark fantasy elements by Team Ninja, also known for the Neo games which take place during Japan's Sengoku or Warring States period. Like Neo, Wo Long is a mixture of historical events coupled with dark fantasy as you also deal with demonic beings as well as human enemies. Before we get right into it, I will apologise in advance for any mispronunciations of names and terms and a big shout out to my friend Brawling Bob for helping me with multiplayer footage. You can check out his content on Twitch in the video description and who knows, you might catch me there. In Wo Long, Fallen Dynasty, you play the role of a malicious soldier who comes to the defence of a village in Zhu province under attack by the Yellow Turbans. The soldier is able to fight off several rebels before being what appears to be fatally stabbed while protecting a blindfolded boy. Fortunately, the soldier is revived and you are then free to choose the appearance and gender of the player character. You then fight through the village with the help of the blindfolded boy by slaying Yellow Turban rebels and demonised enemies while learning the controls of the game before fighting Zhang Liang, the General of Man, as well as one of the three major leaders of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, alongside his brothers Zhang Bao, the General of Earth, and Zhang Zhao, the General of Heaven. As you fight Zhang Liang, he consumes an elixir which corrupts him, and you fight him off with the help of the divine beast Ying Long. As you reunite with the blindfolded boy, he is then attacked by a mysterious Taoist in black who corrupts Ying Long and knocks you off a cliff. You then awaken in the neighbouring Yan province and your journey to quell the chaos in the land begins. Along the way you will meet important characters who will help shape history during the later Han Dynasty as well as the following Three Kingdoms period while thwarting the Taoist and Black's attempts to create the ultimate elixir. But is this game any good? Find out in... The Good. I really enjoyed the gameplay Wo Long has to offer as well as how it intertwines itself with Chinese mythology and Taoist concepts. As you go around vanquishing enemies, your character will gain Qi which doubles as this game's experience. It can also be obtained as usable items much like the soul items in a Souls game. Qi can be allocated to increase your character's stats which are represented by the five phases or elements. Wood, Fire, Earth, Metal and Water. The amount of points you have allocated to each element also affects what wizardry spells you can use and the game also deepens this role by giving the elements a strength and weakness over each other, much like how they interpret in real life. The game also takes a page from Elden Ring and Sekiro's book and allows your character to jump as well. This generally gives you greater freedom in the battlefields which acts as the game's main story and side stories, as well as more control over ambushing enemies from above. The greatest feature which I think this game has added is the morale system. As you fight and successfully damage and defeat enemies, your character and their allies morale go up. Morale affects how powerful you are in battle, and this applies to the enemy as well. You can gauge how dangerous an enemy is by the morale number above them, so it's ill advised to take on an enemy with a significantly higher morale level. The game is a little more forgiving than the Souls series as you don't lose all of your chi upon death. You'll respawn at the last major battle flag you'd put up which doubles as this game's bonfires by providing you with some breathing space to buy items and level up whilst respawning a majority of the enemies killed in the level. You can get the chi and morale lost in death by defeating the enemy that killed you or in the boss's case by rechallenging them. If you are killed before reaching the boss or by a different enemy the lost chi is gone forever. Placing flags also affects your morale and fortitude by setting the minimum morale level for you and your allies if you're killed and respawned which encourages exploring as the higher the morale, the stronger you are. You can also offer one of your dragon pots, which is Wo Long's equivalent to an Estus flask from the Soul series, to markers where other players have been killed by certain enemies for a temporary morale boost. And you'll find lots of those as you explore the levels. The game does have multiplayer options where you can play the game cooperatively or invade another character's game. In the case of the former, the higher level character is adjusted for balance, so high level characters will be limited when playing through a lower level character's story. The game has randomised item drops and item rarity are ranked from 1 star to 5, with 5 star gear only being available through New Game Plus. 
the rarer of the item, the better the additional effects on it. Some of these effects can be salvaged from a weapon or armour and transferred to another weapon or armour. You can also change the look of your gear too, so if you don't like the look of your current setup, you can make it look like something better. The game's spiritual balance plays a big factor of the game as successful attacks will fill the spirit gauge in your favour, whilst taking damage, using weapon skills and casting spells, blocking or missing your timing fills it in your opponent's favour. Having the gauge balance in your favour means your next weapon skill attack will deal more damage and doubles as extra spirit for casting magic or using weapon skills. If it fills on the other end, your character will be exhausted, opening them up for a free attack from the enemy. These rules apply to the enemy too, so the goal is to stun the enemy for you to perform a fatal strike, a strong attack dealing lots of damage to the enemy. The game also has a very high emphasis on parrying, deflecting and countering, as doing this to your enemies will raise your spirit, whilst depleting the enemies, and the enemy will generally flash red before using a powerful move that you can deflect back at them or counter reducing their spirit bar. Normal attacks can be parried too and this opens the enemy up to additional attacks from you. This is similar to how posture works in Sekiro and stamina is tied into the spirit system in Wolong, so it does add another element of strategy to things. Deflecting I found was a very fun mechanic and it looks really cool when you deflect a chain of attacks an enemy performs on you. The game's boss fights I found very enjoyable and even if I didn't beat them all on my first try, I found challenging them again and ultimately defeating them very satisfying. Fighting against Lu Bu at Hulao Gate I thought was quite a rush when I was playing through the game given his prowess and the reputation of his strength. I also liked the game's story. I enjoy history and I'm reasonably familiar with the events of the Three Kingdoms era. Wo Long has its own take on this of course with the inclusion of demons. The game also takes a somewhat more sympathetic and more level approach to characters with the main one being Sao Tzu who is normally portrayed as a more villainous character. In this game they have his more positive traits show and I find that pretty refreshing. The characters also tend to use their courtesy names or style names more often when they refer to each other, which is a nice touch. Getting to know the characters of the game as you fight alongside them is also beneficial as by maxing out your friendship you'll get a copy of their equipment which is a nice reward. As you fight through key events of the later Han Dynasty alongside these warriors, you can also form packs with divine beasts which grant you effects such as damaging the enemy or healing yourself and can be summoned by filling up the divine beast gauge. These beasts are generally from Chinese mythology and include the four guardians, the azure dragon of the east, the vermilion bird of the south, the white tiger of the west and the black tortoise of the north. You can have one divine beast set at a time but their assistance can change the course of a fight. The game follows some key battles between the Han forces and the yellow turban rebels as well as battles and events that ultimately lead to the end of the Han dynasty and I applaud the story for keeping these key beats while adding in the elixir, demons and Taoist and black subplot intertwining things with Taoist beliefs and practices. However, the game isn't without fault so let's explore those in. The Bad I find that the game is incredibly generous when it comes to loot drops. So generous I think that it actually begins to be an annoyance as you'll be continuously picking up weapons, armour and accessories that you'll be ultimately selling off or salvaging. The weapons and armour are from a set pool and the rarer the gear the better and more skills are available on it. Weapon skills tend to also be from a pool with unique weapons having a chance of having a unique weapon skill. The base parameters do remain the same so a 1 star and a 5 star weapon will still deal the same base damage, but the type of skills and the abilities which you can add to a weapon is what makes all the difference, and a 5 star weapon will give you more of that flexibility. Likewise can be said about the armour, though you do have armour set bonuses which grant additional benefits, though I do sort of wish it was easier to know what those bonuses are. As I often switch to ranged weapons as I run out of ammunition from them, picking up additional ranged weapons does mean I have to be careful when selling or salvaging as I don't want to salvage mine by accident. However, I do appreciate that all this excess stuff can be sold as upgrading and buying things are costly, but I do feel like my inventory gets pretty bloated at times. There are also CT shield demons found throughout most of the levels. These friendly demons which look like baby pandas with inverted colourings can be fed with one weapon, armour or accessory and will give you a random accessory of the same rarity. This is also the only reason why there is even a drop option in the first place as you cannot trade weapons in multiplayer and I can get why but instead of dropping the item perhaps interacting and choosing the item from the menu would have been a better approach. Character and enemy AI I felt could have used a little work as well as you can get some pretty bizarre behaviour from them. 
I am incredibly thankful that this game only penalises you falling into water or off the map by reducing the offending character's health to 1, or by killing off the enemy that falls, otherwise I would be spending more time adding the ally back into my team or starting from the last major battle flag. I also felt that enemy variety could use some work too. I appreciate how some early bosses and demons which felt like big threats to you just become regular enemies later, but they don't change their patterns, so if you're familiar with them, you know what you're doing. Soldiers are a much of a muchness and once you get their patterns down or if you have two allies with you, you're going to find yourself ganging up on a poor soldier and not giving them a chance to fight back. I found that bosses and stronger monsters were the only things that gave me any trouble and most of the time it was usually down to me being careless so I can't even fault that. But perhaps changing up fighting styles of the soldiers as factions change or providing a bigger variety of demonic enemies would have added more to the challenge of this game. These issues only apply to the PC versions of the game but it has been plagued by a number of issues which thankfully most have been subsequently patched or addressed. I started capturing footage for this review with version 1.02 which had issues such as parts of the game flashing white, which was an issue with the ambient occlusion setting which was fixed in the 1.03 update. The Game Pass version of the game seemed to only open up in a quarter of my screen, despite the setting being set to borderless or full screen which is still an issue that plagues me with version 1.04 which is the current version at the time of this review. The boss fight with Dong Zhua crashed the game however sounds continued to play. These issues of course are not on the console versions of the game, but it does follow a trend of issues that does seem to crop up with most Koei Tecmo games on PC. Usually I have minor or next to no issues so I don't really touch upon them and soldier on, but these particular issues while some have been fixed now, were a headache whilst playing through the game and capturing reference footage. Other than that, I don't really have much else to complain about so it's about time I give. The Opinion Wolong is a really fun experience and I had a lot of fun playing through the game alone and in multiplayer. The gameplay mechanics are an improvement I feel over the Neo games, and the story is a good fusion of events in the late Han Dynasty with Taoist elements and mythology intertwined along with dark fantasy. The game I think is hindered with an uninspired and over generous loot system, character and enemy AI at points, enemy variety and to a lesser extent poor PC optimization and porting. I consider this game more a successor to Neo with a Chinese setting, and I'm looking forward to a sequel and seeing how it plays out as well as the potential it holds. If you're a fan of Neo or enjoy the Souls games alongside Bloodborne and Sekiro, then Wo Long is definitely a game to try out. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Wo Long Fallen Dynasty a Shitisho Demon out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.